Welcome to lesson one, getting to know the work area. The objective of this lesson is to be able to move around Photoshop, navigate, open files, save files, close files. And of course, how to open your lesson files. Let's get started. We are going to go ahead and open Photoshop by going to, I'm using a Windows machine, by going to Start and navigating to Photoshop. Once Photoshop loads, the first time it opens will require you to log in with your created username and ID when you subscribe to Photoshop. After that, Photoshop will remember these settings and will open without you having to log in every time. In order to open the documents, we can go File, Open, navigate to where you downloaded the files from Lesson 1, which is, in my case, the desktop, Photoshop Lesson Files, Lesson 1, Notice that there's two files. One is a start file, one is an end file. If you wanna see what the files will look like, click on start and open up, afterwards open up the end file and you can see the beginning and end. Since we are talking about navigating Photoshop, the file we open is irrelevant because lesson one will not have a due date and does not require anything for you to turn in. The one thing I do require is for you to be able to open Photoshop and look around. In looking around, you'll see we have the tools panel on the left-hand side. Notice the tool panel has singular tools going up and down. Notice the little side-to-side -side icon, which will make the tool panel expand. Notice each tool has a small little triangle at the bottom right corner. This little triangle indicates there's more tools underneath that can be viewed. For instance, the crop tool. If you click on a little triangle, you'll notice there's the slicer tool, the perspective crop tool, the crop tool, and the slicer select tool. Sometimes in using Photoshop, the tools can be hidden. Or if you used the last tool, for instance, the lasso tool, Let's say you switched it to magnetic lasso tool. From then on, it's going to show a magnetic lasso tool. And when you're looking for a regular lasso tool, you will not be able to see it. Go ahead and click the triangle again and select the lasso tool. Furthermore, we have a different panel on the right hand, right hand side. This panel is customizable based on the type of workspace you use. So we have swatches and different patterns and library files, adjustments and layers channels and path. Don't worry about remembering all of this. The most important thing right now is to know that these can be moved around and adjusted. These are your tools. They can also be moved around and adjusted. And this right here is the tools option menu or option bar. Based on the tool you select, this menu bar will change. You'll have different options available 
based on the tool. For instance, if you select the text tool, you'll notice the option menu has changed. Let me go ahead and select the zoom tool. Notice if you don't know which one is the zoom tool, if you take your cursor and you hover over each individual tool, it'll tell you what the tool does and how to operate the tool. If you hover over the zoom tool, notice the pop-up box says zoom tool. Now you can select by left click, left pressing and dragging on the rows and zooming in. Notice our zoom ratio is on the bottom left hand side and it says we zoomed in 12,800%. Let's go back and zoom back out to 100%. Notice the window is still not, the image is still not fully viewable. So in order to see the full workspace, we can hit full screen, or actually we can hit fit screen. Notice the entire workspace is now visible and the image is at 63%. Honestly, I never use the zoom tool because when I'm working with Photoshop, I'm using the selection tool or the paintbrush tool or the crop tool. And the way I zoom in is, let's say I wanna zoom in to this portion of the image containing these purple flowers. I hit the Alt key, I position my cursor on to these flowers and I scroll up with my mouse wheel. And to zoom out, scroll down. If you wanna zoom into the middle of this rose, hold the Alt key and scroll up. Scroll back out to zoom out. So I never actually use or very seldomly use the zoom tool icon. The other tool I want you to, to introduce you to is actually the menu bar. The menu bar has very common features that you'll find in most applications. For instance, new image, working on a new image, save an image, save as an image, export the image, print an image, open an image, close an image. Let's bypass the edit, image, layers, type, select, filter, 3D view options. And let's go ahead and land on the window option. The window option allows you to customize the window you're currently using. Right now, we are using something called Workspace Essentials. Notice the check mark right next to Workspace Essentials. If what we're doing is more related to photography, we can select the pre-selection workspace photography. And notice our workspace changed. Notice now we have a histogram and we have slightly different tools and slightly different options. Again, we can go to Windows, go to Workspace and select Let's say we're working with uh, 3D graphics. We can select 3D. Some of the tools have changed. And of course, our panel on the right-hand side has changed as well to reflect more common tools and options used by photographers for 3D designers. Notice it says 3D mode. Let's go back to essentials.
Now, you can customize your own Photoshop. For instance, I don't want to particularly see the learn items. So I can close the learn items. Libraries, let's close it for now. Just have to find the close button. Adjustments I like, but I don't want adjustments here on top. I want to move them down. I'm left click, I'm left dragging to where I want the adjustments to be. Notice I just resized my tool panel by slowly dragging this bar right here that you see. I can also slowly mouse over until my cursor changes from a pointer to a two-headed arrow, and I can resize the color palette. I like to have the most possible space for layers as possible, and you'll know why in the upcoming lesson. Now that we customize this, we can save this customization under Windows, Workspace, and we can go right down to New Workspace. And give this a name. I'm going to call this Workspace Vlad's Workspace. I can save keyboard shortcuts, menus, and toolbars. I'm going to I haven't changed any shortcuts, so I'm just going to hit menus and toolbars and click save. So now, let me show you something else. Let's say you moved around a whole bunch of items and your workspace kind of looks crazy. And you got things all over your workspace. To get back to your normal workspace, if you go to Windows, and right now we're working with Workspace, Vlad's Workspace, we can go to Reset Vlad's Workspace. And I'll go back to the way it was. If you are working in any of these other workspaces, let's say essentials, and you modify things. You can always go to Windows Workspace and Reset Workspace. Now, if you're working with Photoshop and you adjusted some settings on the profiles, on the settings, preferences, settings, general, and you adjust a lot of settings in here, which is not part of your workspace profile, and you want to reset all of that back to factory default, there's a small trick you need to learn. The trick is just before you click on Photoshop to launch it, position your hands on control alt shift don't press yet anything yet just be ready to press so as soon as i double click or click on adobe photoshop 2020 i will instantly press control alt shift and if i'm fast enough you will see a message appear do i want to reset photoshop to default let's try it there we go Adobe Photoshop message came up. It says, delete the Adobe Photoshop settings and file. If I click yes, everything is reset to default as if you just installed Photoshop and Photoshop opens up. Let's see if Vlad's workspace is still there. 
notice my workspace is still here. But all the settings for all the tools and all the preferences and all the shortcut keys have been reset to default. The other thing I want you to pay attention to is when you open an image, file, open, navigate to where your image is, file, open. I wanna navigate on your computer and go to desktop and go to Photoshop lesson files, lesson one, start. Notice on the bottom, you have some properties pertaining to the image. It gives you the image pixel size, it gives you the image size. This, you can use to increase and decrease the image. You can also see document size, document profile, and other options. Let's look at document size. Now we can see the document itself is 3.85 mega, uh, megabytes in size. Document profile, this document is in RGB, which stands for red, green, and blue spectrum. And it gives you other items of interest. I'm going to leave it in document size. If you look at the document size of the document that is currently lesson one, start file, which is right here, start file, you'll notice that the document is 7,777 kilobytes, otherwise known as 7.78 megabytes. If you look at the size of the document, that is closely resembles the size in megabytes, 7.67. The other thing I want you to be aware of is the hovering. And I think I covered it a few minutes ago. When you cover on some, when you hover on an element without pressing, a tool tip will come up and say what that button is done or does. For instance, I'll hover over this home looking button. It says home, which takes you back to initial document. I can click on back to go back to my workspace. That will conclude my portion of this lesson. Please do the work in lesson one to better acquaint yourself with Photoshop and some of their tools. We will be using some of these tools later on in our lessons. Nothing is due for this lesson at this time, but please practice and complete the lesson on your own time. Thank you, and I'll see you next week.